Here we go. Shola's for dinner. It is pretty out there, isn't it? Now, honestly, I don't know where Shola's is in here. I know that Todd English's Blue Zoo is on the first floor where I ate before. And there was another restaurant down there, but I don't think it was Shula's. So I'm looking upstairs, hoping I can figure it out, because I've got nine minutes on my reservation. And I don't like to be late. So when you get into the swan and the, well, the dolphin, I like the water movement. If you go inside and you go up to the first escalator and take that up to where it says Lobby Convention Center, turn to your left, and you'll see it appearing right over us. Shola's. I made it in time. Oh, see this carpet? It's the most cushioned carpet I have felt. Maybe my feet are just so tired. But I stepped on this and I'm like, I'm walking on little clouds. Oh my God, this is awesome. So uh, Shola's is Don Shola of the Miami Dolphins restaurant. So as you walk down the hallway, I'm assuming that's him. Sorry, I'm... I'm not into sports ball, I apologize. Okay, I'm gonna check in before we sit down. And there are also multiple memorabilia thingies and things you can buy. Oh look, you can buy cigars. Okay, it's one of those places. Hi guys. Okay, so we're at Shula's. Um, now I did check in with the reservation, but because I'm just a party of one, they gave me the option to sit at the bar. And to be honest, I prefer sitting at the bar because you can chat with people. Um, I have ordered a drink, but they have been making me. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. So this is the smoked Manhattan, but we've changed out the rye whiskey for bourbon. The smoke smells lovely. It's, it's, oh. And it's still got a hint of that smoke kind of floating on top. Oh, it's nice, it's sweet. That's lovely. Okay, guys, so we have ordered the tuna tartare. It normally comes with, I believe, a Cristini, and the bartender who's amazing, not because she's standing here, she was amazing, because they don't actually have cucumbers in the kitchen, but she cut up cucumbers for me, so I can use that for my tartare instead of using bread. Um, so, hey, sit at the bar. All right, so, Yay, you're gonna give it a try. Yay. So this is perfectly safe for gluten. Now I don't know if it's good for soy, which would be good for me. Mm -hmm. mm. okay. So, it's got a bite to it. Like a fire bite at the back of the throat. Oh yeah, definitely. The, um, the tuna itself is very fresh, big solid chunks. Mm. And the bite, the bite is um like a, um, a sriracha oil or something in the fish. And then the avocado base is to take some of that burn away. My guess is the bread would have done that too. You know, the chips, the, the chip is, um, it's a chip that they normally use. This is lovely. This is good quality, nice flavor. Oh, and if I forgot, the picture will go in right here. Um, but I'm going to sit and enjoy this, and I've got a starting a lovely conversation with some people nearby me on the table, so at the bar. So I'm going to go back to talking to them, and I will come back to you once we figure out what we're doing for our entree. Here is the gluten-free menu. So now I actually have the actual gluten-free menu for you guys to look at. The other menu had a lot more pages. That's okay. There are steaks. There are sauces I can do. There are side items. There are... Awesome. Yep. So as you can see, the appetizer I got was one of the only two and the only one I could have. You got that wedge salad. See, it's a, a brick chicken, a Norwegian salmon with a bar blanc, or a hollandaise. And some of them have gluten-free and dairy-free, some are just gluten-free, but there you go. So we're getting steak tonight, it looks like. We'll find it. So the, that tartare was lovely. And that, now, as you saw from the uh, gluten-free menu, that was ironically the only appetizer I could have. Luckily, it's the one I was interested in. Um, you know, I mean, I could have done an iceberg wedge. Hey, you can get those anywhere. So we are now uh, waiting for our steak. We wanted something small, so we ended up going with the 10-ounce uh, filet. 
Uh, and I was thinking about getting the Hollandaise or the Bernays. I don't like Bernays because I don't like tarragon, but I was thinking about getting the Hollandaise like I did at the Yacht Club. And I asked the waitress and she said she didn't think it needed it. It had really good flavor. So I'm okay, then uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, they asked how I wanted to prepare it. I said, however the chef recommends. And then I wanted to get a side with it. So, um, because the steaks are just the steaks. And I, so I went with the asparagus and it comes with a, it, you can have as an addition a Meyer lemon vinaigrette that is gluten free. So I got that to give it a try, see what we think. Okay, the steak has arrived. The as asparagus has gotten here and the pictures will go right here. So they had me cut the steak to make sure it was the way I wanted it. It is very rare. This is the less rare edge of it. Very rare. Put salt on the outside of the skin. Oh, sorry. It's a beautiful rare. It's a beautiful rare. So I'm, I am at tasting it now. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the salt on it is nice. I might have put the salt on it. That's a good steak. That's my favorite steak ever. Um, and I am learning that if you really want the best steak, you want something like a, a ribeye or something, some marbling. Just because that, that fattiness becomes helps grill and cook the steak and get the best flavor. It's made well and actually the rare sections are better when you get to that outer edge where it's cooked more. It's not as good. But actually, yeah, it's like a the center it tastes better. So having the chef cook it the way he recommends with as rare as possible is probably the best bet. Now we are going to try the asparagus, as I like to call it. Otherwise known by other people as asparagus. It's a good basic asparagus. Nice char on the edge, and you can see that there. It adds a little smokiness to it. And there is that Meyer lemon vinaigrette. There it is. I didn't taste it on the other piece. It's a nice bright lemon. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good with that. Well, I'm gonna eat my steak. Because it's, it's lovely. It's a 10 ounce filet, so it's a big filet. And that's the smallest steak they make. So, come with an appetite. Um, with that, yeah, the asparagus with Meyer lemon is really nice. That's quite lovely. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably about 12 pieces of asparagus in there. There's 12 solid thick stalks of asparagus. This is good. And it's got just a little bit of like, it's watercress or some kind of a sprout on the side. It's green things. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> Actually, micro greens. Mm -hmm. Nice fresh green on that. This is really fresh and nice. Um, so yeah, we're gonna eat this wonderful steak and our asparagus, finish our drink. I don't believe that there are any dessert options here for me. That's okay. I have sweet nuts and I could get that peppermint muscle on the sandwich. At least once. So I'm gonna finish enjoying this guys and I will talk to you all. So for those of you playing along, this is the bill. The only discounts they offer are to cast members, so there is no annual cast discount, there is no UBC discount. Um, they do not accept gift cards here, so it's really like working on an outside regular restaurant. Good quality food, lovely entertainment. You know, the staff here, the bartenders here especially, charming and wonderful and I highly recommend them. Highly recommend them. 
Um, so I'm gonna finish here paying the bill, and then I'm gonna head out. And if this has helped you learn how to eat gluten-free at Disney, or learn about what your options could. Oh, before I get to that, I'm so sorry. Dessert. Uh, the only gluten-free option they had for dessert was a raspberry sorbet. Um, and again, it was not made in-house. I think I did that with another restaurant a few prior to this. Um, but it wasn't done, it wasn't made in-house, which means it's a generic sorbet. And if I can get it somewhere else, I might as well pay like three bucks for it rather than ten. You know what I mean? Um, that being said, I didn't ask what the price was, but there are things in Epcot that would probably be more interesting. I've got desserts with me if I need, so I'm going to stick with one of these other items. So that being said, um, entrees, two appetizers, a salad, and all of the steaks, a chicken, a salmon, and one other entree. And I don't remember those off the top of my head, but those are going to be your, your entrees. Quality steaks, sauces for the steaks, all that good stuff. Um, very full bar, a lot of brown liquors. I mean, I'm, I'm looking around this thing and it's, it's, I mean, there's other stuff too, but a whole lot of stuff. So, if you have enjoyed this video, if this helped you learn how to eat gluten free around Disney and Universal and all those other things, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, Put in the comments if there's a restaurant that you would like me to try the next time in town, or if I have, I'll let you know it's coming up or when I did it, just to give you an idea of what the other options are out here for you. I hope it's helpful. I hope we're, we're ready to make this. I don't have to. Singing hey ho, a maiden's life, one, two, three. Hey ho, a maiden's life, won't you drink with me?